Hey friends, how are you doing today? I hope you're feeling blessed and staying in God's presence. And if not, I hope you feel uplifted after today's video. If you're new here, welcome to His Princess Christian Community, where we read a chapter of the Bible every day and then discuss it afterwards and in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel grow and it opens the door for more people to join our community. And while you're at it, check out the description box. We got a lot of great stuff in there. So today we're reading Acts chapter 19, but before we get started, I want to say a prayer if you wouldn't mind bowing your heads with me. Dear God, thank you for bringing us together here on His Princess Christian Community. Thank you for opening the door for people to join our community, for connecting us and strengthening our bond. Thank you for opening our eyes, our ears, our hearts, and our minds to your word. Thank you for your wisdom, understanding, and clarity as we seek to interpret your word. And thank you for the courage to apply it to our daily lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, Acts chapter 19. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul traveled through the interior regions until he reached Ephesus on the coast where he found several believers. Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? He asked them. No, they replied. We haven't even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then what baptism did you experience? He asked and they replied the baptism of John. Paul said John's baptism called for repentance from sin, but John himself told the people to believe in the one who would come later, meaning Jesus. As soon as they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then when Paul laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they spoke in other tongues and prophesied. There were about twelve men in all. When Paul went to the synagogue and preached boldly for the next three months, arguing persuasively about the kingdom of God, but some became stubborn, rejecting his message, and publicly speaking against the way. So Paul left the synagogue and took the believers with him. Then he held daily discussions at the lecture hall of Ty Tyrannus. This went on for the next two years, so that people throughout the providence of Asia, both Jews and Greeks, heard the word of the Lord. God gave Paul the power to, perform, to perform unusual miracles. When handkerchiefs or aprons that had merely touched his skin were placed on sick people, they were healed of their diseases and evil spirits were expelled. A group of Jews was traveling from town to town casting out evil spirits. They tried to use the name of the Lord Jesus in their incantation, saying, I command you in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, to come out. Seven sons of Sceva, a leading priest, were doing this. But one time, when they tried it, the evil spirit replied, I know Jesus, and I know Paul, but who are you? Then the man with the evil spirit leapt on them, overpowered them, and attacked them with such violence that they fled from the house and house naked and battered. The story of what happened spread quickly throughout, through Ephesus to Jews and Greeks alike. A solemn fear descended on the city, and the name of the Lord Jesus was greatly honored. Many who became believers confessed their sinful practices. A number of them who had been practicing sorcery brought their incantation books and burned them at a public bonfire. The value of the books was several million dollars. So the message about the Lord spread widely and had a powerful effect. Afterwards, Paul felt compelled by the Spirit to go over to Macedonia and Archia before going to Jerusalem. And after that, he said, I must go on to Rome. He sent, two, he sent his two assistants, Timothy and Eratus, ahead to Macedonia while he stayed a while longer in the province of Asia. About that time, serious trouble developed in Ephesus concerning the way. It began with Demetrius, a silversmith who had a large business manufacturing silver shrines of the Greek goddess Artemis. He kept many craftsmen busy. He called them together along with other, others employed in similar trades and addressed them as follows. Gentlemen, you know that our wealth comes from this business, but as you have seen and heard, this man Paul has persuaded many people that handmade gods aren't really gods at all. And he has done this not only here in Ephesus, but throughout the entire province. Of course, I'm not just talking about the loss of public respect for our business. I'm also concerned that the temple of the great goddess Artemis will lose its influence 
and that Artemis, this magnificent goddess, worshipped throughout the providence of Asia and all around the world, will be robbed of her great prestige. At this their anger boiled, and they began shouting, Great is Artemis of the Ephesians. Soon the whole city was filled with confusion. Everyone rushed to the amphitheater, dragging along Gaius and Aristarchus, who were Paul's traveling companions for Macedonia. Paul wanted to go in too, but the believers wouldn't let him. Some of the officials of the Providence, friends of Paul, also sent a message to him, begging him not to risk his life by entering the amphitheater. Inside, the people were all shouting, someone, some one thing and some another. Everything was in confusion. In fact, most of them didn't even know why they were there. The Jews in the crowd pushed Alexander forward and told him to explain the situation. He motioned for silence and tried to speak, but when the crowd realized he was a Jew, they started shouting again and kept it up for about two hours. Great is Artemis of the Ephesians. Great is Artemis of the Ephesians. At last the mayor was able to quiet them down enough to speak. Citizens of Ephesians. Ephesus, he said, everyone knows that Ephesus is the official guardian of the temple of the great Artemis, whose image fell down to us from heaven. Since this is an undeniable fact, you should stay calm and do nothing, do not do anything rash. You have brought these men here, but they have stolen nothing from the temple and have not spoken against our goddess. If Demetrius and the craftsmen have a case against them, the courts are in session and the officials can hear the case at once. Let them make formal charges, and if there are complaints about other matters, they can be settled in a legal assembly. I'm afraid we are in danger of being charged with rioting by the Roman government since there is no cause for all this commotion, and if, the, if Rome demands an explanation, we won't know what to say. Then he dismissed them, and they dispersed. Amen. So what did you think of Acts chapter 19? I'm interested to hear about it in the comments below. Let me know what your insights or interpretations were on the chapter. Maybe comment your favorite verse or just say hi and let us know that you're part of the community. And if you've been blessed lately, let us know so that we can rejoice with you. And if you need prayer, make sure you're putting that in the comments too so we can pray together as a community. Okay, Acts chapter 19 starts off with Paul's third missionary journey. And... Um, so in this case, he's discussing about the difference between being baptized in water for the repentance of your sins and then being baptized by the Holy Spirit, um, claiming that Jesus is your Lord and Savior and that he you know, sacrificed himself for your sins. Um, so it's important that we're doing both, that we are um, you know, repenting of our sins, we're confessing that, we are getting baptized in water, and then we're also um, acknowledging that Jesus is our Lord and Savior and that he died so that we could have eternal life. So it says, when Paul laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them. So as soon, it says, as soon as they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Um, and it says, they spoke in, in tongues and prophesied. Um, so then the next um, which are gifts of the Spirit. And, you know, these are different for everybody. The gifts are not always the same. Just because you don't speak in tongues, I'm just, this is disclaimer here, just because you don't speak in tongues doesn't mean that you have not been baptized by the Holy Spirit. Um, I know there's a lot of controversy in the church about this, but um, God made it clear that he gave different gifts to everybody, um, you know, and, and they all mean different things. And if you really study the scriptures, you'll see when people are baptized with the Holy Spirit, it's different in each case. Um, so then the next section is Paul ministers in um, Ephesus, and I love this part because it says in verse 11, God gave Paul the power to perform unusual miracles. And um, so when handkerchiefs or aprons that merely touched his skin were placed on sick people, they were healed of their diseases and evil spirits were expelled. And I just love that. Can you imagine just being able to, you know, wipe your hand with the handkerchief and then give it to a sick person and or send it to a sick person and then them be healed? Like the God's reach is so incredible. How far, how wide, how deep his reach is, is, you know, beyond our understanding is something that we can't even comprehend. It's just like how Jesus was able to say um, to that man, you know, you're 
was it his son is healed he was like you don't even have to come with me just say the word and he will be healed um you know just by his breath we are healed and um it's just so amazing to think about and it's all about your faith and having that faith to believe that God is able and he is more than able to do these things. Um, so then um, I like how further down um, it says these Jews were um, casting out evil spirits and they tried to use the name of Jesus um, to do this. And in verse 14 and 15 it says, um, so well, it starts in verse 15. It says, but one time when they tried it, the evil spirit replied, I know Jesus and I know Paul, but who are you? And I wrote to the side, do so much work for God that the enemy fears your name. And I think that it's so important. And, and you know, there's scriptures that say um, Jesus will look to you and say, I don't know you you know, because you didn't know him here on earth. Um, so he won't know you in heaven. And I think that it's so important that a lot of the things that we're asking for, we need to spend time with God. We need to get to know God. We need to make sure that we're doing so much work for the Lord that it scares the enemy, that the enemy is scared of us, that he knows who we are because we are working for the Lord every day. And you know, it says, I know Jesus and I know Paul because he sees the work Paul is doing. And he says, but I don't, who are you? Who are you? And I just think that this says so much about who we are. Like, how much work are you doing for God? How much time are you spending with God? You know, when it comes down to it, you know, would God, would Jesus recognize you at the gates? Does he know who you are because you spent so much time with him here on earth? You know, do, does the enemy know who you are because you're spending so much time with, with God? And sometimes that can be, you know, definitely a gift and a curse because here on earth, you know, when you, a lot of people who are, you know, strong believers are attacked by, you know, evil spirits because they believe in God and because God has a great plan for them. And, you know, the enemy is always trying to thwart that plan. He's always trying to put up obstacles and get in your way. But we have to trust that through God, anything is possible. And God can block that. He can stop any enemy attack. We through the we have the um, authority over the power of the enemy because of Jesus Christ. And we have to claim that and use that. And it's because of Jesus that we have that. So we have to know Jesus. We have to believe that he is our Lord and Savior. Um, so then it says um, in verse 20, so the message about the Lord spread widely and how had a powerful effect um, because obviously they saw that um, it was because of Jesus that what they were able to that there that Paul is able to perform all these miracles and cast out these evil spirits and the same can be said for us. Um, we just need to have that faith and we have to cleanse ourselves and make ourselves readily available. You know, in um, during Jesus's walk, it says that they were asking him why they couldn't cast out the evil spirits. And he says, it's because you're corrupt, your corruption. You know, this is such a corrupt world and we have to cleanse ourselves daily. We have to spend time with God. We have to repent of our sins. We have to turn to God and through everything. And, you know, don't get down on yourself too much when you mess up or when, you know, you don't do the right thing. As soon as the Holy Spirit acknowledges or lets you know that this isn't right, we need to repent of it and ask for forgiveness and just cleanse yourself daily or moment by moment if you have to. And, you know, trust that through God, you are able to cast out evil spirits. You're able to heal. You'll, you're, you're able to do all these things that, um, you know, Jesus and Paul were able to do. It's through faith and, you know, being cleansed and being in right standing with God. Um, so then in the next section, it talks about uh, the the riot in Ephesus and this is when you know a lot of the merchants were getting upset because you know the message of Jesus is to get rid of all your idols and these people were making money off of making idols so of course they were upset so they turned against um you know Jesus is you know and Paul and everyone that was with Paul and they created a lot of confusion in the area but again, this is a great display of God's favor. Um, in this case, they, you know, had everyone gathered at the amphitheater. And um, so it says that the mayor was able to quiet them down enough to speak. And he was basically like, you don't have a case. There is nothing that you, they, they have done nothing wrong. And, and I just love that because, again, 
the enemy can try to persecute us. He can try to silence us. He can try to, um, you know, hold us down. But God's favor is above all that. And he will not let us be held in bondage. He sent his son so that we could be free, free to spread his word, free to um, spread the good news and to preach the gospel. And he will not let you be, um, you know, held in bondage or he will not let them speak against you. He will not let them hold you back or harm you. Um, he will set you free so that you can speak his message and spread the good news. And um, so at the end, they um, dismissed them and everyone dispersed because there was nothing that they could say against him because, again, God's favor. He spoke to the mayor and he uh, enabled the people's hearts to be softened so that they would quiet down and let them go freely. Um, and, you know, that's God's favor in its finest. So that is my interpretation of Acts chapter 19. I'm interested to hear what you have to say about it. Leave it in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I hope you stay blessed, stay in God's presence, and have a great rest of your day. I love you.